Four million years ago, the Higgerman Valley was full of prehistoric life. The home of the ancient Lake Idaho, it served as a watering hole for Pliocene flora and fauna, including the now famous Higgerman horse. Spanning 500,000 years of the fossil record, it has now become one of Idaho's richest deposits of natural history. The combination of wetland sediment and the later flooding of Lake Bonneville has carved out an exciting view of Idaho's pre-Ice Age geologic and biological past. Now a national park and monument, it offers an educational and scenic attraction. Imagine stepping into a time machine and dialing it back 4 million years. Idaho would be very different during the Pliocene Epoch. The weather, warmer and wetter than we see now, and the impressive Lake Idaho dominating the landscape. The local wildlife drawn to the water's edge for survival is the start of our story, as sediments of the water system created the perfect environment to fossilize the deceased creatures. Injured, ill, old, and possibly even animals caught in strong currents trying to cross the body of water were quickly buried in the soft sand beneath the water. Very different climate than what we have today. Um, if we went back four million years in time, there would have been a really large lake. Uh, we had an ancestral or early version of the Snake River, uh, but it was a largely lake-dominated ecosystem, which is one of the reasons why we have so many fossils, because lake and river systems are great for preserving fossils, because you get lots of sediment coming in and burying them. Uh, it was warmer and wetter than what we have today, um, although we do have about a million years of time preserved here, and you do see some changes in the climate through time, which is represented um, by the types of animals that you get. So times when it was warmer and wetter, and we think that the lake was probably at its largest extent, is when we also have the most beavers, for example. Hagerman is home to many different Pliocene era species ranging from fierce carnivores, large herning animals, and small rodents. Many of the animals we would recognize as similar to the animals we see today. Otters, canines, bears, reptiles, birds, and the Hagerman horse. Latin name Equus simplicidens, the Hagerman horse is thought to be an evolutionary link between prehistoric and modern horses. The Hagerman horse is an important discovery not only due to the amount of specimens collected, but also due to the evolutionary link to modern animals. About the size of a present-day Arabian horse, these were single-toed and share traits with modern-day zebras. It is one of the earliest records of the genus Equus, and Hagerman boasts the oldest specimen of the species, which has also been found in other parts of North America. A key stage in horse evolution, the animals continued their presence on the continent until the late Pleistocene, about 10,000 years ago. Then, like many other large-bodied mammals, they vanished. The genus Equus did not return to North America until 1500s with the Spanish conquistadors. This is at least 200 uh, horses in all. Uh, the site's famous for the horse because it's the earliest example of a single-toed horse. So if you're familiar with one of the very common um, kind of uh, changes in evolution through time um, examples that people like to give, you see the um, decline in the number of toes of a horse through time. So you go from five, which is the typical ancestral trait, which we have the ancestral trait of five digits, and some animals like the horse have lost those digits over time, it uh, helps with locomotion. And so this is the earliest example of a single toed horse. And it's also the largest uh, accumulation of that particular horse. Other animals not common to the area were also found, including large ground sloths, saber-toothed cats, and relatives of mastodons and camels. There are also relatives of what many would recognize as South American animals, such as llamas and peccaries found at the fossil beds all buried in the sediments of lake waiting to be discovered millions of years later. Okay, well in addition to monitoring, um, I for one have been uh, dabbling in the collections. Uh, we have a new species of otter as a result of that. It was just published in the Journal of Vertebrate Paleontology. Well, it's out now in their journal and the official publication I think is in September, but it is available online. Um, and that was actually from collections that were made by the Idaho Museum of Natural History over two decades ago. 
So it's one of those great stories where there's always new things to be found out on the monument, but there's also new things to be found in, in old collections. And so this was material that had been sitting there waiting for someone to open up that drawer and say, hey, wait a minute, it's something new. So it's, there's new discoveries in both the collections and out in the field. 14,500 years ago was the first step in uncovering the hidden fossils, when the Hagerman Valley was created by the Bonneville Flood. When rushing water swept through the area, it carved through ancient sediment, exposing the fossils. Um, so what Lake Bonneville did was it helped to um, expose a lot of our fossils. It really helped kind of erode away all that sediment, probably took a bunch of fossils with it, you know, that are now way far down the stream and destroyed, but in the process it exposed the fossils. So if you go out to the monument, you see these really nice steep-sided cliffs. Imagine if that was just a continuous wall of sediment. You wouldn't know that the fossils were there. They wouldn't be eroding out of the, the sides of those cliffs. And in fact, most fossils that are out there in the world will never ever find because they're like a mile deep full of the earth. So it takes things like erosion from floods or rivers um, or uh, tectonic activity, so um, uplift due to um, earthquakes and things like that, to expose the fossils for us to be able to find them. Fossils started to be seen as early as the migration west on the Oregon Trail, which runs through the park. Elmer Cook, a cattle rancher in 1928, was the next step in the evolution of the park. When he discovered some fossilized bones, he knew enough to hand over the bones to a local scientist, Dr. H. Stearns, who informed the Smithsonian. These bones caught the attention of Dr. J. W. Gidley at the Smithsonian. Sure. Um, we have ideas that people back during when the Oregon Trail was active um, were probably aware of the fossils. Uh, but the first time it became discovered by science is in uh, 1928, Elmer Cook, who was a farmer in the area, went to uh, a local USGS uh, geologist and said, hey, you know, there's these fossils eroding out, I think they might be important. And he in turn went to the Smithsonian and contacted researchers there. And the following year, uh, excavation started with the Smithsonian. The excavations were tedious, with steep slopes, hot weather, and the presence of rattlesnakes posing a huge challenge. However, digging in the Idaho desert would be rewarding. One of the most important discoveries in this excavation was the large volume of an extinct horse known as Equus simplicidens, and named the Hagerman horse. The excavation in the 30s resulted in five nearly complete skeletons, more than 100 skulls, and numerous isolated bones from the Hagerman horse, finding such a large deposit in one place being a very rare occurrence. Before the excavations in Hagerman were completed, it was set on the stage of scientific discovery through papers published by Dr. C. L. Gazin on the variety of vertebrates found. There is a much larger instance of herbivores than carnivores. Only 5% of the populations are carnivorous. However, there are many fragmented examples that the Smithsonian discovered during their excavation. Of 105 species recorded, there are 14 carnivores. One of the most exciting things about the fossil beds in Hagerman is the abundance of what paleontologists call microvertebrates, which are small mammals, frogs, birds, and fish. Oftentimes, smaller animals fall apart quickly after death and are scavenged, preventing them from becoming fossilized. Likewise, aquatic animals such as beavers, muskrat, turtles, and the otter are very prevalent in this former wetland. Uh, we have over 65,000 in our collections. Uh, the Smithsonian collected several tons worth of material that they brought back to the Smithsonian. The National Monument was established in 1988, not only to preserve the fossils, but also parts of the Oregon Trail and many artifacts that indicate a later presence of Native Americans in the area. Located in southern Idaho's Magic Valley along the west shore of the Snake River, it is over 4,000 acres. The monument offers breathtaking views of the Snake River in the Hagerman Valley and a hiking trail that follows the path of the Oregon Trail. This monument is one of only three national parks that contains part of the Oregon Trail. This park is a unique park in the fact that our enabling legislation is for research and research only. And that um, 
It hasn't really been done a lot because we don't have a research facility where we could bring um, the public into so that they could see research being done. We are um, pushing that forward right now. The superintendent and um, the resource staff is pushing that to try to get that funding so that the public can have more of appreciation as to why this park is so significant. And it's not just because we have the early ancestor of the horse, it's the whole gamut of research that you could be able to um, obtain from the fossil record. A lot of people don't realize how much information we can obtain from the fossil record. The Visitor Center offers a variety of specimen exhibits and a junior ranger program for kids, as well as information about their sister park in Kenya. As a protected national park, the fossil beds themselves are not open to the public. It is dangerous to collect fossils on the grounds. In the last two decades, the prevalence of landslides do not only pose a threat to visitors, but also the fossils. We have a problem of radon being emitted from these um, fossils. So when the um, fossil preparator is working on them, they're creating this dust and that. And so they have to wear these special equipments and that type of a deal so they're not breathing in this dust, dust that's laden with radon and that. Like for in here, the air circulating is, is sufficient enough to keep the levels down in that, so there's no worry for the public in here. But it's just in the lab situation because our equipment is starting to fail in that, so we've shut the lab down until we could improve that equipment. And that's another reason why we don't want, want the public out there on the park in that, because they pick up a fossil, which is illegal. You're not supposed to be picking up any fossils. <laughs> and if it's a radon emitting fossil and you have it in your home, and if you don't have the proper ventilation, or if it's a kid and it's next to his bed stand, I mean, you really don't want that around. So it's always a good deterrent to tell people too. <laughs> there have not been any large scale excavations since the 80s, but park staff and scientists Watch for fossils exposed by erosion. Uh, we're famous for the horse quarry, which people do actual quarry work at, but most of the fossils have been recovered just by doing ground surveys. So just simply walking around with your head down, looking very closely at the ground, sometimes crawling, um, looking for material that's eroding out. So most of the fossils have actually come that way. Uh, we have over 4,000 um, acres. It's a 17.6 square kilometers of monument that has been protected at the National, Nat National Historical Site, um, not only the Horse Quarry, but the entire monument. And so it's protected by the National Park Service um, for both current and future generations, uh, both the public to learn from and enjoy, and then also for scientists to engage in research. 500,000 years of history are preserved in the bluffs surrounding the Hagerman Valley. And the more we look at the 400 million year old specimens, the more we understand about the evolution of our great planet. And now the National Park Service looks after this beautiful treasure nestled in the Hagerman Valley.